The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This book begins with the last dragon reborn, Luz Theron Telamon, confronting the Dark One, or the devil of this world. The devil was previously thought to be locked away in a prison, but it turns out that he can escape into a small degree, and he has cursed the male half of the true source, or their ability to use magic, channel, and makes it so that all men go insane the more they use magic. Luz Theron has already gone insane and murdered his entire family. The prophesied savior of the world has lost his mind. From here we cut to current times where our main protagonist, Randall Thor, is walking to the local village, Emmons Field, with his father. Rand notices a dark rider on the road behind them, a rider he feels wants to kill him. Rand alerts his father, but by the time he looks back, the rider has disappeared. Rand and his father then arrive in Emmons Field, and Rand meets up with his two best friends, Matt Cawthon and Perrin Abara. Both of the boys have also seen the writer. They find this very unnerving and debate whether or not to tell more people about what they've seen. From here, we also meet Rand's main love interest, Egwene Alvir, a young woman who is training to be the next Town Wisdom, or Town Healer. Well, current Wisdom, Nynaeve Almira, is also a friend of Rand's, slightly older, but also someone he feels he can confide in. Three strangers have arrived in the town recently, one of whom was a glee man named Tom Marilyn, the greatest, the greatest character, character in, in all, all of all fantasy. Of fantasy. The other two strangers arrive together, one a small noblewoman named Moraine, and the other appeared to be her bodyguard named Lan Mandragoran. The, the greatest, greatest swordsman in, in all, all of fantasy. fantasy. Fast forward a few hours and Rand and his father leave the village and head back to their farm. Rand and his father have a nice conversation and seem to be settling in for a relaxing evening, when suddenly their farm is attacked by Trollocs. Totally not orcs. Rand's father displays an amazing ability with a sword and kills most of the Trollocs attacking the farm, but unfortunately is gravely injured. Rand begins to drag his father to the village, but when he arrives, the entire village is in flames. Fortunately enough, most of the villagers are actually unharmed. This is due to the fact that Moraine, the stranger, was actually an Aes Sedai, this world's wizard. Lan Mandragoran was her incredibly skilled warder, or protector, and the Gleeman had an amazing ability with knives. Moraine informs the boys that they must leave with her. She believes the Dark One sent the Trollocs to kill them and won't explain any further. The boys agree and begin preparations to leave. Rand's father is unconscious and he's not even able to say goodbye. Matt, Perrin, and Rand are getting ready to leave when Egwene shows up and insists she must join them. Moraine reluctantly agrees. Moraine does not like people joining the party. Tom also shows up and insists on joining the group. Moraine does not like people joining the party. As they leave town, they are almost immediately attacked by more shadow spawn. The attacks become so intense and frequent throughout their journey that they must take refuge in the cursed city of Shadar Logoth. You think most people would be smart enough to not take any things from the cursed city. Matt is not that smart. He becomes in possession of a cursed dagger and is now under the influence of Shadar Logoth. Our party flees the city in a desperate attempt to outrun the near army of Shadow Spawn behind them. Unfortunately, due to the chaoticness of the situation, the group becomes split up. We now follow Tom. Matt and Rand as they try to survive. These three manage to make it onto a boat in a nearby river and escape towards the city of Whitebridge. Tom begins instructing the boys and the tricks and trade of being a gleeman. They enjoy their time on the boat and arrive at Whitebridge practically unharmed. Unfortunately, that is about to change. A murdral attacks them while they are in the city. This powerful shadow spawn is one of the most feared creatures the Dark One has ever created. Tom Marilyn fearlessly throws himself at the creature to save the boys. The two manage to escape, but Tom Marilyn is not heard from again. 
Matt and Rand begin making their way to Camelin, the capital city of Andor. They must practically be beggars, moving through the woods and streets with very little to their name. Matt is becoming increasingly sick due to the dagger's influence on him. He seems to be losing his mind and physically falling apart. They arrive in the capital city, and they hear that the false dragon Loghain is about to be brought through the city and made an example of. This man caused chaos in many countries and started many wars, thinking he would be the next dragon reborn. Rand goes out in the city to see him, but the crowds are too thick. Rand ends up climbing a wall in the center of the city just to see him in the distance through the crowd. Unfortunately, Rand loses his grip and falls towards the insides of the wall. He lands nearly on top of the Queen of Andor's daughter, Elaine Tracand. She clearly has an interest in Rand, but unfortunately, her brothers show up. The brothers bring him to the queen, who has her own personal Aes Sedai. This Aes Sedai's name is Elida, and she has a vision of Rand's future. She sees the world burning and more death than she ever thought possible. Let's take this moment to wonder who might be the next Dragon Reborn. Despite Elida's warning, the queen sends Rand away. When Rand gets back to the inn, he meets an Ogier named Loyal. The two get along famously, and Loyal quickly joins the party. Lorraine does not like people joining the party. Rewind to back when the party split. Perrin and Egwene are paired together and fleeing through the woods. They run into a man with yellow eyes named Elias Matura. Elias can talk to woods, and surprise, so can Perrin. Perrin gains golden eyes. Religious extremists called White Cloaks find Perrin and Egwene and take Egwene prisoner. Perrin and the wolves break in to free Egwene and Perrin is forced to kill a couple of White Cloaks. When a wolf dies during the mission, Perrin feels the wolf die within his head. They flee the area knowing they've committed a horrible crime. Rewind to back when the party split. Moraine, Lan, and Nynaeve are now going through the woods. Nynaeve has joined the party trying to get the boys to come back to their village. Moraine warns her that it is far too late for that. And Nynaeve is totally not there to hit on Lan. Not at all. Not a thing. Promise. During this time, Egwene and Perrin find Moraine and Lan and Nynaeve and begin going towards the capital city of Andor. <laughs> Everyone is reunited in Andor, and happiness ensues. <laughs> Except due to the curse, Matt now pretty much looks like this. <laughs> Moraine does the best she can to separate Matt from the dagger, but basically all she can do is prolong his life and restore his mental state, but not his physical. Matt seems to be quickly deteriorating as the book continues. From here, they learn through a series of dreams that the three main boys have been having that one of the seals of the Dark One's prison seems to be at the eye of the world within the Blight. Loyal, the Ogier, actually knows how to get there through the Waygates, a system that lets you travel quickly through the land. Moraine is very hesitant to use these Waygates as they are very dangerous and risk the three boys going into the Blight, which is the home of the Dark One. But, seeing as the seal of the Dark One's prison is something that the White Tower, the home of the Aes Sedai, must have, she decides to risk it. The party enters the ways and starts heading towards the Blight. As they arrive at the Eye of the World, they are greeted by the Green Man, one of the few good entities left in the Blight. He nurtures the woods around the Eye of the World and acts as a guardian. Unfortunately, some other intruders have arrived. The Forsaken, the most powerful wizards, or Aes Sedai, that serve the Dark One. Moraine uses a forbidden weave to kill one of the Forsaken almost immediately by surprise. This weave is so dangerous, even the Forsaken hesitate to use it. Meanwhile, Rand is desperately engaged with the other Forsaken. They are separated from the group, and during their fight, Rand realizes he can channel. He desperately lashes out with the power at the Forsaken, trying anything he can to kill him. He gets a lucky blow in, and somehow manages to steal the Forsaken's power itself. This now opens the gateway for Rand Al Thor to become the Dragon Reborn. At the end of the book, we see Rand approaching Moraine, nearly hysterical with fear. Also, they got the seal. <laughs>